Let's build a block engine by using Scooter framework. First, unzip the Scooter. Then change the folder name to blog. Initialize the application. And start up the web server. The blog site should be up. We can access it now. This is the default home page of our blog web application. The home page shows the default database name. Of course, we don't have it yet. Let's create one. We can manually do this by using MySQL client. Let me paste some code here. Here, we created a blog database with a table for posts. Now let's add a post module to the blog application. The scaffold code generator generates a bunch of files for the basic crowd operations of posts. We can view posts now. There's no post yet. Let's add one. We can edit a post too. We can even post in a different language. We can delete a post too. Pagination is just a click away. We can add validations in our post model. Let me paste some code here. This code indicates that a post must have a name, title, and some content. The name cannot be too long, and the content must be Twitter compatible. Hmm. Maybe in the future we want to forward posts to Twitter automatically. Now let's see if it works. Let me add a new post. If I click the Create button now, the application should remind me of entering name, title, and content of my post. Apparently, validation works. A blog engine should allow others to comment a post. Let's create a table for comments. The comments table has a column for commenter's name, comment body, and a timestamp for the comment. The post ID field is a foreign key that maps to the related post record. Let's add a comments module to the blog application. Again, the scaffold code generator generates a lot of code for us. We now have a comment model. Let's associate it with the post model so that a post can find its comment.
This is a simple way of saying a post has many comments. We can declare the link in comment model too. Here it says a comment belongs to a post. In this way, a comment object can find its associated post. By default, Scooter treats a model as a resource and access it in a restful way. As you can see here, the scaffold code generator lists posts and comments as resources. Therefore, users can access comments directly through these URLs. But we want comments to be nested on the post. We don't want comments to be accessed directly. So let's make some changes here. Instead of listing comments here as an independent resource, we put it here with a restriction. The keyword strict here means that we can only access comments through a post. We can verify this from the routes view. You see? Scooter is smart. It automatically detects and loads configuration changes. Comments are now nested on the post. Now let's add some code in the post show page to display comments of a post. Let me edit the code here. Because we associated comment model with post model, we can easily load a list of comments for a particular post with the all associated method. This is a typical example of lazy loading. We only load objects when we need them. But directly using post object here is not no pointer safe. Scooter provides helper methods to deal with this. Let's refactor this code. This is better. Class O provides many helper methods for working with an object. We also need a form for submitting comments. Let me add some code here. The class F is a form utility class with helper methods on HTML form. This code shows that the comment will be submitted for a specific post. The resources name of the comment is comments and the resources name of the post object is posts. There are two input fields for comment. Commenter's name and comment body. We then need a comment controller to handle this comment entry form. Since we only want to create a comment, we just need create action in the generated controller. Let me remove all the other methods. We need to modify this create method to reflect the fact that comment is nested on the post. <laughs> 